Hi, this is Mike Peterson from Challenge Island, Oakland County East, back with another one of our Steamtastic Fridays. So we're, we're continuing our series this week at the Steam Railroading Institute in Owasso, Michigan. And today we're going to tackle the A in STEAM, which stands for art. So rather than the art of the full-size trains, which you can see in one of our earlier videos, today we're going to take it down a notch, at least size-wise, and talk about model trains and all the great art and work that goes into creating really cool model trains. So with me today, I have George, who's a volunteer here at SRI, who's going to tell us more about what goes into the world of model trains. Well, thank you. Appreciate the introduction, and thanks for coming to the Steam Railroading Institute. Uh, art and model railroading, art's only one part of it. To talk about the whole hobby of model railroading would take a lot more than the time we have here. But there is a lot of art involved. Uh, as much as you want to put into the hobby, uh, a whole lot or, or maybe not much it depends on what you're interested in and that's one of the great things about model trains as a hobby um, why do you do a hobby for relaxation uh, you get home from a long day of work perhaps you want something to relax with for me model trains is one way it's been one way to do that for, for many many years and one of the things i've done here at the steam priority institute is work on these model train displays here you see our polar express layout behind you part of it at any rate uh, and so the artwork involved in this is trying to depict something that might be maybe from the Polar Express movie, the train going through the mountains, through the hills, past a river with a waterfall. And so you take that picture in your mind's eye and you, and you build it out of different materials. In this case, it's actually made with, uh, with plastic foam underneath that hillside covered with plaster, covered with plaster rocks that were cast from molds and covered with white paint and a, actually powdered marble, mm. uh, which is used normally as a paint thickener, dusted on top of the surface and, and glued down, and some model trees and some little buildings that actually came from a Christmas display commercial package. Uh, and that gives us our, our look of, a, uh, of the Polar Express train heading up to the North Pole on Christmas Eve, as, we, as you might see in the movie. Okay, excellent. But there's so many other aspects in model railroading as well. Uh, this really depicts something that's kind of a fantasy. Um, model railroading can be a, a depiction of something that exists in real life. Uh, there's so many aspects to the hobby. You might build a literal model of a specific town, of a specific railroad, looking to depict the, uh, perhaps the Grand Trunk Railroad in Southern Michigan or Central Michigan as a, uh, as a model of a real towns that existed and as they, as they existed many years ago. Hmm. Uh, okay, so model railroads can be a way to learn about history as well history. as someone's built an accurate model yes. of the past. Yes, indeed. Okay. And, and the construction of models that existed in that town at the time. Uh, perhaps a grain elevator that sits in the town of Leonard, Michigan. You might build an exact model of that as you, as you try to duplicate that, that aspect of, of the railroad that went through that town many years ago. Or for me, model railroading is a little bit more imagination. Uh, the railroad in my basement is, is not a specific model of any location. It just looks like a railroad that's running through the mountains in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, pulling coal trains. Because mm. that's what I find interesting and, and that's what I've tried to depict. Okay, okay. so, if, so if we had a, a student or a young person watching this video, and if they wanted to create a model train, it's up to them whether they build a realistic scene or a pretend scene or so, uh, whatever they want. It's all what you okay. want to do. As, as detailed, as non-detailed, as, as whatever you want whatever you want it to look like. Okay. I was curious too, George, the, the size of the train. How do you figure out, are there certain sizes that the trains come in? There are. Uh, there are certain defined scales. This is kind of in the, on the larger side. Uh, this is what's called O scale. A quarter of an inch represents a foot in this scale. Uh, on the display track that you've seen in some of the other videos, uh, it's actually literally on the other side of this wall. Those are also O scale models. Uh, the most popular scale is called HO, which stands for half O, roughly. Uh, so it would be about half as big as this, half as high, half as long for the same model. And then they go down smaller than that to N scale, which is roughly half again HO, and all the way down to Z and even smaller, which literally trains are not more than a half an inch tall. And then they mm -hmm. go bigger than that. We have the a display train running around the, the ceiling here at the Steam Revenue Institute Visitor Center that's in what's called G-Scale. Mm. Okay. And we have a, 
live steam railroad track out there on the side of the, of the property, which uh, from the gauge of the track is seven and a half inches. Mm. So many different scales for model railroad. Okay, depends on depends on what size train you want to run, how much room you have, and how good your eyesight is. So, okay, <laughs> sounds good. I suppose that then if, if a student was going to build a town to go with it, they could do a little bit of math and then figure out, okay, if the train's this big and the buildings were this three times as large, yeah, yeah. they could do the math and make it look You can do the math that way. And obviously there's, and there's commercial buildings that you can purchase or kits you can purchase that are appropriate for whatever scale you're building. Okay. Uh, but if you're going to, perhaps you might want to scratch build a building out of strips of wood, sheets of wood that you can buy at a hobby shop or online, or from pieces of plastic that you can buy and make your own model without using a kit. And you can find plans for that building and scale them appropriately so that, mm. so that the building comes out to the right size for your railroad. Okay, so that makes sense then. Okay, excellent. All right, so, so if, uh, if a young person was interested in getting more involved with model railroading or seeing more examples of it, where do you suggest they get started to find it? Well, to see examples, they're all over the internet. Uh, lots of YouTube videos, that sort of thing. For more information on on the hobby, one of the best sources is the National Model Railroad Association, which has a website, nmra.org, um, and we'll provide you a link with that. Uh, they have education videos, introduction material on what it, what's involved in getting started with model railroading. Mm, okay, and excellent. And typically you start simple and grow from there. All right, good, excellent. And there are also model railroad clubs. There may be some in your area uh, that you can find on the internet. And they often have open houses, so you can go visit them and see the see the model railroads they have in operation. Okay, get some great ideas to build your own at home, or just yep. watch it and enjoy. Just it? enjoy. Okay. It. Yep. Exactly. Excellent. All right, sounds great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, George. Sure. Thank you for your time today, and we'll we'll put some of those links at the end of the video today. So, if you would like to learn more about model trains and some of the art that goes into steam railroads, we'll, we'll give you some places to get started on that. All right. With that, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next week.